Welcome to the Potter Blog site. H7N9 bird flu spread through human feces. Uh, that's what the Chinese say. And that's what they strongly suspect. See it right here. And they believe it's spreading through human feces. So, what is the United States Navy doing about this? Well, the United States Navy Medical Research Unit 6 is in Peru and they're going to sample 8,000 Peruvians, take stool samples, throat samples, they're looking for fomites, influenza related, all of this. Uh, there's two uh, federal biz op solicitations for this. For four different cities in Peru, they're going to check these people three times a week. And uh, we look here at the... Uh, at the Word document where they describe some of what they're doing. It says this effort will also examine the potential for fecal influenza and other respiratory viral shedding amongst infected individuals. And just so you see, from the Navy. So what does this mean? Why Peru? Well, we'll tell you why Peru the blue wing teal. This duck has got one of the longest migration routes. Goes from Alaska down to Peru. Massive migration. H7N9 bird flu has been detected in blue wing teals. These were one of the first birds that have uh, H7N9 detected in them prior to the Chinese outbreak. Also been detected in turkey farms in the United States probably because of this bird. So as this bird moves down from Alaska to South America, if there is any H7N9 bird flu in there, these birds will be the ones carrying it. Uh, Asian migration and North American, South American migration routes overlap at Alaska. These guys are the first guys who are going to spread it. They end up in Peru. So let's look at this. Here's uh, Peru, and here are the locations in Peru where uh, the United States Navy is going to be doing its testing. So you see all along the uh, ocean and up into the high areas. So it's very interesting. Peru is the harbinger for South America and the United States for advance notice of H7N9 bird flu hitting the country. Now. If H7N9 bird flu comes into the country this year, naturally, it'll be on the wings of the blue-winged teal. And if people catch it through natural means, one, one the most likely suspect will be the pigeon. The Chinese actually had to do a pigeon call because they one of the people who, captured, who came down with H7N9 bird flu in China was Mr. Hu. He was engaged in pigeon cultivation and sales before he was confirmed to be infected with the virus. Uh, some of the pigeons that were captured during this call actually had H7N9 bird flu in them. And the bird flu that these pigeons had in them did transmit two ferrets via the airborne route. And here's a little link here. One of the three ferrets exposed to the pigeon H7N9, one contacted it. So what's so dangerous about pigeons? In the urban environment, pigeon droppings are the most likely way for this virus to spread. Unfortunately, the CDC and other people, you know, they're not looking at pigeons, at least as the vector. They're looking for human-to-human -human transmission. That's not the primary risk currently. The current primary risk, we believe, is uh, pigeon-related, the feral pigeon population. Most people don't understand that bird flu in birds is primarily an intestinal disease. Just so happens, it seems that bird flu in humans also seems to be an intestinal disease. And that's why we have the United States Navy 
in Peru checking 8,000 people stool samples, throat swabs, fomites you name it wash your hands